picked in the whole wide world reflected cross-site scripting so reflected cross-site scripting it's known as a non-persistent attack vector what does that mean basically when i send you a attack vector with reflected cross-site scripting in it that's not saved on the server that's basically a parameter that's reflected in the response and that's why it's non-persistent versus your stored XSS's, which are persistent. Both can be blind XSS. Mutation XSS is even a different type of XSS. And then you have DOM XSS, which bypasses your source entirely, goes directly into the document object model, but that's for later. Malicious scripts reflect of web servers. In our case, we could have that in any context remember that from previous lessons so malicious scripts reflect into any of the contexts so the three majors that you need to remember are going to be in the html injection the html tag attribute injection and the javascript injection this get executed in the victim the browser and it's often found in search fields error messages those types of things but it can be in anything that is reflected. How do you look for this? You enter any type of random value into any parameter, and then you control F in the response for that specific random, like for A, B, C, D, A, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then in the response, you check if that is there. What you need to do first is identify all of your entry points, your URL parameters, but it could also be in post. Remember that we also have post labs, which we can show you in a bit. So the form inputs, that's also one, and then HTTP headers, investigate, refer headers, user agent headers, those types of things. As you can see on the screen right here, we have a few basic attack vectors for you, like a basic alert and image tag. That's the one that I like to use most. I don't know why, but for some reason, a lot of people like to use a B tag. B tags are blocked a lot, images are not. That's my experience, and that is from bug bounties directly. JavaScript URIs as well, although those don't work in the latest browsers in the top and the bottom left. And you have event handlers that are like body onload alert, like the alert that could be anything, of course, on mouse over, on blur, those types of things. So the event handlers look into those. There's different types of them. And then you have, so for example, one could be blocked, onload could be blocked, but there are more. And of course, you have your direct JavaScript injection as well, which you need to probably first escape the current JavaScript section that you're in and then break out of it. For more information on that, refer to our labs. When it comes to XSS filters, what you'll often see is things that check for, like for example, a specific character. You can encode that character, like for greater than, less than, for example, HTML entities, URL encoding, Unicode. Do that twice, do that three times if you have to. Sometimes that's necessary. I don't know why, but for some reason on one of my attack vectors, I had to uh, encode the percent sign uh, in the encoding. So when I encoded it, it came out like percent 25 uh, semicolon, and then the percent sign itself had to be something like percent 20. So sometimes double encoding is needed. You can obfuscate scripts as well by mixing up or lower cases or using alternative quotation marks. Exploitation and filter gaps, for example, what I like to do is find out what exactly is filtered and what gets through. And I like to narrow it down by just trying things. Does this work? Does this work? Does this work? And I try it in small little increments and I see is what I'm putting in here blocked or not. The best filters are the ones that immediately show you the result of what is blocked and what is not blocked. Like if you enter a huge attack vector, it'll just remove everything that is blocked. That's the best one because then you can immediately see what is blocked and what's not. Another thing that you could do is use polyglots where you craft your payloads, your payloads valid into multiple contexts. The one that I like to use, as you might know, is single quote, double quote, greater than sign, a broken image tag, a dollar sign, squirrely bracket, squirrely bracket, seven times seven. Testing and verification. What you'll do first is you'll do some input injection. Any payload or any type of random, can be any random text, 
then you search the response for that random text you identify where reflection is happening you execute your confirmation so you try to craft a proper attack vector that works in your instance that does something and not just pops up an alert but actually steals an account or whatever and the, um, that is the impact assessment basically you evaluate potential damage of your successful endpoint when you report this if you find it remember to add a clear description a proof of concept an impact analysis and remediation suggestions of course uh, like the labs that we have as well they are great labs if you want to learn anything about ethical hacking and now you can just go to labs.hexpert.com they're free for everybody you can just go to the cross-site scripting and the reflected cross-site scripting is what we've been talking about as i said before you have get and post cross-site scripting post is also reflected because in this case if i just go to this lab directly you can go click the share this lab button Ooh. of course it doesn't have access to my clipboard but that's okay because we can just go and we can view frame source or page uh, i'm just gonna view the page source and then it's dis displayed in an iframe we are hackers we can do this right like basically that's not that's no problem oh of course why and that's a great one i'm, I'm gonna take the time to sh educate you on this why is the javascript on this not executed properly where the iframe is the iframe that needs to be that's because this is the source code this isn't the executed thing like you can see in the developer console right here so if i go to the developer console right now and i inspect this let's go and do that real quick there we go so here we see we have a document which is actually executed that's that's kind of fucking awesome isn't it why is that that's the difference between basically the source of something the source of a document and and the so let's copy the link address the document object and model when i that's also why dom xss will never work in the view source because there is no document object model anyway what you can see here is that the value right here it's never stored on the server so it is reflected cross-site scripting i'm gonna open my inspect page and in the network tab right here i can see that i'm making a post with a value it's not stored on the server and it's reflected immediately can i still get xss here of course i can why couldn't i like i mean what's the problem why, why would you think i can't i mean there we go easy as pie isn't it so uh, how is this useful you might be thinking well i don't have csrf protection on here i mean i'm just saying you could csrf and attack factor into here and bang self xss in the headshot isn't that amazing guys so these are just a few examples of how you could use reflected xss to your advantage because a lot of people don't know that you can also look into the post values a lot of people only look into get values please look into bodies please look into post requests i'm just saying i mean you never know you never know right you ne you need to look into it anyway if you're going to do anything starting success related you need to look into it and if you want to have any type of scanner there's free scanners there out there like Dell folks there's a free scanners out there but there's also paid ones things like xss or things like nox nox is a highly recommend highly recommended xss or it's a coming up a project it's pretty decent i mean i'm not gonna lie i had a look into it it's a little bit more difficult to install that's for sure but like you can get through it and the pricing is different as well it, it depends it's still like 19 bucks a month but uh, maybe we can arrange something maybe there's a coupon in the course i'm not sure I, you can check um, i mean if there's no coupon available anymore that means that all are taken all right all right ladies and gentlemen that is it in highlights of what i would like to go over now i have a challenge for you could you find me my reflected xss on rather site so if i go back to my labs right here reflected xss rather chat right here what's that all about let's have a look let's have a little bit of a look see rather chat easy and medium let's see can you beat this i don't know could you i mean i can i made it i would hope i can beat it but could you like what can you do here i'm curious to see how you would get around anything uh, in terms of filters if there are any 
or how you would handle this type of stuff. So let's register. Now, what did I do wrong immediately? If you've spotted this, 10 points. It's a stored XSS issue, but yep, I didn't put my uh, profile right now. Why is that important? Because sometimes there is massive filtering on your ingress, but not on your egress, meaning like uh, in different locations as well. So sometimes there could be a location to enter a profile information and there could be another place to enter your profile information. And one might be less protected than the other. And if your output isn't filtered properly, but your input is on one location and not the other, you're gonna still have some problems. Now post, that's easy, right? Image source equals X, nothing to do with reflected success anymore. Just seeing what we can get there, nothing. So that is already unfortunate. What about a comment? Nothing. Okay, gonna have to look on. What about this? Nothing. And what am I doing wrong now? I'm doing things blindly. Now there isn't anything reflected about this. This is all stored. But I would like to say, let's stop doing things blindly for a moment and let's try something else. Let's just try to see if we can at least get some like, or like broken text in, right? That's probably not gonna work because we see here. Now how about this? Let's try to see where we are actually at and inspect this little element C right here. Okay, so you can see that I'm having the image source put in here, text area, name, profile, description, visible image source, and then nothing. Okay, so basically you would think that I am looking in the right context, but there is still nothing. When I go to a comment, it's the same thing. There is this, the same context right here, but I'm in a P. Can you even get cross-site scripting in a paragraph? It's a question to you. Please look it up. It's not a difficult answer to find online, but can you even get cross-site scripting in a P tag? Who knows? Now, if you are really, really bothered for the solution, you can always go to solution. I believe it's solutions.txt for this one. Nope, it's solution maybe. Or my dumbass forgot to add the solution at this point. But it's okay, it's okay, babies. What I will do is I will give you a hint. Look at this section. All right, ladies and gentlemen, good to have seen you for this reflected cross-site scripting lesson. I'll see you in the next one by Amazing Hacker.